So about six, seven months ago, I was uh, presenting at a conference. And I did my uh, presentation. And at the end, there was a Q&A session. And they opened it up to the audience. And one of the guys uh, in the audience asked me and said, um, Mr. Redmond, you're you know, pretty resilient. Can you give me an example of resilience? And it kind of stumped me for a, uh, for a second. And I sat there and I thought about it. And I said, oh, I got it. A sat nav. And he looked a bit stunned. I think he was expecting me to give us an example of my life where I felt I was resilient. And I said, a sat-nav. And he, could, he said, could you explain a bit more? And I said, well, yeah. I said, you know, a sat-nav, you put a destination in it, and come hell or high water, it will get you to that destination. So to me, that is uh, an example of something that was really resilient. And he went, thank you. <laughs> Wasn't quite the answer he was expecting. And I said, listen, uh, what I will say is, it's a shame we all couldn't have a sat-nav in us because we'd all become a lot more resilient. Went away, came back, spoke to my wife and said, well, I gave this talk, this guy gave me a bit of a weird answer when I gave, or weird look when I gave him this answer. Anyway, a few months later, I was putting another presentation together. And that particular question that that guy came back to me. And then it hit me, we all do have a sat-nav within us. Most of us don't realize that. And a lot of us don't know how to unleash it. And that's what I'm here to tell, tell you and talk about today. But before I can do that, I need to tell you a little bit about myself. You heard some in the introduction. About 30 years ago, or as my wife would say, two and a half stone ago, I used to be an athlete. And I'm very privileged to say that I've been British champion, European champion, Commonwealth champion, world champion, and competed in two Olympics. And as again said in the introduction, I'm possibly more famous for a race that I lost than the races that I won. The race I'm talking about is the one where I got beaten by my dad. That's the easiest way to, uh, to explain it. But I actually want to talk about what happened after that race. Most people think it was the end of my sporting career. To be honest with you, it was pretty much the beginning of my sporting career. So what happened uh, after Barcelona? Well, the 18 months after Barcelona, in that time, I spent trying to get back as an athlete, resulted in having seven operations on my hamstring. And after the seventh operation, the surgeon telling me, your career's over, you're never going to compete for your country again, just go and get a normal job and live a normal life. I'm going to fast forward this because of, of obviously of time. Three years, or just under three years after that conversation with the surgeon, I found myself as a professional basketball player, and actually I played basketball for England for one international. Two years later, I'd given up basketball and I'd embarked on a rugby career, playing professionally for Coventry and for a team in Hong Kong, because I got big into um, rugby sevens. And I did try out for England, but didn't quite make it. But I've competed for my country in two sports and been professional in three. Not a bad day's work. I then got out of professional sport, so now we're going to leap forward 12 years later. I'm into motorbikes, and I started racing motorbikes. And by 2011, the team that I had formed, we had become national champions uh, at, at endurance uh, racing, six-hour races. I gave that up and decided to try another sport, which was kickboxing, something my wife used to do. So I thought, I'll give it a go. We've got some kickboxing fans in the audience. And um, within a year of uh, taking up kickboxing, I became national champion. I gave up kickboxing because I enjoyed the, kick, uh, the, 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 the combat side of things. But I didn't enjoy the kicking so much, so I enjoyed the punching. So I went from kickboxing to boxing. <laughs> and I did a few uh, white-collar fights, which were great, and then uh, won all those. And then I, three years ago, at the tender age of 53, I turned semi-pro as a boxer. I'm now 56. I had my last fight two weeks ago in London, which I won. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> really happy. Thank you. I wasn't looking for an applause there, but I'll take it anyway. Um, now, the reason that I've actually explained all that is not to stand here and boast about how good I am at sport. Well, maybe a little bit. No, it's not at all. It's to kind of illustrate that we all, in our own worlds, have the ability to adapt and change in certain situations. And I realized a few months ago when I was putting a presentation together that I've been using my inner sat-nav. Now, we know how a sat-nav works. You see it on your drive, you put a destination in, it fizzes and whirs around for a little bit, and then it comes up and tells you that your destination is however many miles away, and your ETA is one hour, 59 minutes, or whatever. And as I say, by hell or high water, it gets you to that destination. Maybe not in the time that it's uh, said, it could be slightly later, could be earlier, less miles, more miles, but it gets you there. And I thought, we've got that in us. And I remember a quote by Charles Darwin. Now, I haven't got it word for word, 
but it's something along the lines of, it's not the strongest or the most intelligent, but those who are able to adapt and change will survive and thrive. And the two words that stood out to me was adapt and change. And out of those two words, the one word that really stood out to me was the word adapt. And I came up with my adapt theory. And it was based around what a sat-nav does. And I want to share that adapt theory with you because you can all use it in your lives and we can all unleash the sat-nav within us. So we use the word adapt and we take it as an acronym. So each letter stands for an action that we need to take when we want to pursue our dreams, our goal, our aim to get to our destination. So the example I'm going to use, let's say I'm going to be competing in the Olympics in uh, 2024 in Paris. I wish. Now, generally, there are three things that can stop me from performing at my best in Paris in two years' time. Injury, a loss of form, or coming into form too soon, peaking before the championships. I am going to add a fourth one to that, and I can't believe I'm saying this. Three years ago, I didn't think I'd be saying this, and that is the Olympics could be postponed 12 months. <laughs> but generally, those are the things that happen. So my destination is Paris 2024. I'm training, things are going well, and all of a sudden, I'm challenged. I pick up an injury. It could be a minor injury, a medium injury, it could be a major injury, but I pick up an injury. So the first thing we have to do, and the first letter in the word adapt, is A. And the A stands for accept the situation that you find yourself in. Accept the situation that you find yourself in. More often than not, there have been so many people when they find themselves in situations. Two years ago was a great example. I um, mentor a lot of athletes, and when the Olympics was postponed, postponed, I had athletes on the phone saying, oh my God, well, the Olympics are postponed, oh my goodness, and this and that. I can't believe it. It can't be. It's going to be in the right time. I'd say, accept it. It's happening for you and everybody else. The people who perform well are the ones who can accept it now and deal with it now. They're the people that are going to perform well in a year's time. So acceptance is the first thing. Once you've accepted that situation, so I've picked up this injury, you then look at the next letter, which stands for direction. The D stands for direction. Now I've accepted the fact that I've picked up an injury. Am I still heading in the same direction? Am I still on course for Paris 2024? Now, if it's a minor injury, I might only be out for a couple of weeks. So we're talking about a two-week detour off that road, back on it, and I'm back on course towards Paris. It could be a medium injury, in which case I might be out for, I don't know, six weeks, eight weeks. So it's a slightly bigger detour. But guess what? I'm back on course to Paris. Now, it could be a bit more of a serious injury. It could be a season-ending injury, in which case my direction is no longer Paris, but it could be the World Championships or the Commonwealth Games or the Europeans or whatever major championship is the year after. So my destination has slightly changed. God forbid it's a career-ending injury, in which case I'm going to have to do a 180-degree turn and think of something completely new, think of a new destination. Once we've, we've accepted it and we know our direction, we can move on to the next letter, which is another A, and that stands for alternatives. What, all, what alternatives are out there for me now I've accepted the injury and I know what direction I'm going in? Is this an injury where I need to bring in specialists? Is it just a case of good physio will get me back on track? Do I need to bring in a specialist and have a, an operation? Do I have to go from weight-bearing to non-weight-bearing training? Do I have to get myself in a pool and off the track or on a bike? Whatever the case may be, what are all the alternatives that there are for me having accepted the, the situation and knowing what direction I'm going in? Once I've done that, I can then move on to the next letter. And the next letter is a P. And the P stands for plan. The new plan, the new process, the new procedure. What does that look like? So we put a new plan together, and I bring my team in, my coaches and advisors, and goodness knows what, and we look at what that plan is going to look like, and we make sure we leave no stone unturned. Once we put that plan together, we can then move on to the final letter. And the final letter of the word adapt is a T. And that stands for transition. 
we now transition that plan into action. I've worked with so many organizations that spend time, effort, and money on putting these great plans together and never put them into action. They never actually put them into action. You need to transition that plan from paper into actions. First step, second step, third step, a timeline, but put it into action. Now, that's what I call my ADAPT theory. Now, let's go back to a satellite navigation. You're sitting on your drive, as I said before. You put that destination in where you want to go to. So it's now I'm 59, 98 miles, whatever it be. And you set off on your journey. And your, your sat nav says, at the top of the road, take a right. Well, it does on mine to get out where I live. And you take a right. Unknowns to you, your sat nav is using that ADAPT theory. Because you're busy whistling or singing badly away to some take that or whoever in your car. And you're just thinking, oh, I'll wait for the next instruction. But your sat nav has the technology to kind of look ahead. And it sees in two, three, four, five miles, there is something that is going to change your journey. It could be a roadblock, it could be a road closure, it could be traffic jam, it could be building, uh, it could be, you know, building works, whatever. Your sat nav accepts that. It then works out, do I need to change direction, whether it's permanently or temporarily? It then looks at different alternatives. Which way am I going? Am I better off going right of that problem, or am I better off going left of that problem? Once it's worked that out, it then puts a new plan together. Right, we're going to go left, this, that, blah, 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 and we're going to be back on track. And then it takes that plan and transitions it into action. And do you know how that's done? It tells you. Make a left at the next junction. And that's what it does. Now, just like a sat-nav and a journey, you don't necessarily have one roadblock, one issue, one problem. And that's the same in life. Change is a cycle. It happens over and over again. So you can go through that ADAPT theory, picked up an injury, it's only a, you know, a minor injury, I've been through the whole thing, and I'm back on track. And guess what, a few weeks down the line, something else could happen. I could have a loss of form. I've got to accept it. Work it out, and I'm still heading in the same direction. Find out all the alternatives. Do I need to work on my speed? Do I need to work on my strength? Do I need to drop the weights, hope, you know, to encourage the speed? Whatever the case may be, if it, if it is a loss of form, by the way. Then we put a new plan together, and we transition that into action. We go through it again, the same way as sat-nav. 20, 30 miles past the first incident, something might happen again. And your sat-nav goes through exactly the same process again. Change is a cycle. I've never fought for my country, but I liken it to, I don't know, I don't know, uh, hiking through a, a, a jungle with my other army buddies, and you know, we're, we're kind of sneaking up on the opposition, and a bullet is fired. And you dodge it, and you go, whew, dodge that one. Well, there's a good chance if, you've if there's one bullet fired at you, there's going to be a load more coming at you. So you don't only dodge one bullet in life. They are continually almost fired at you. And that's the same with change. I guess the biggest change that we've all had was the last two years. I don't know about you guys, but it wasn't the best time of my life. Maybe I should have been manufacturing masks and surgical gloves. Might be a different story. But we all had to go through change. So it doesn't matter who you are, what you do, we all have to go through change. Some people are able to cope with that quite well, others aren't. I liken my uh, ADAPT theory to some simple instructions. It just gives you some guidelines of how to continue moving forward. And I don't care whether you inch forward or you stride forward. As long as you're making strides forward and working your way forward, that's what we want in life. The other example that I sometimes give, um, IKEA. Other flat pack companies are available. But IKEA, if I give you all a massive IKEA box with, let's say, a wardrobe in it, and I say you've got three hours to put this together, and you take it all out, and there's screws and little dowels and nails and tacks and goodness knows what, and no instructions. Half of you will go, oh my God, there's no instructions. The other half will go, there's no instructions, I'm still giving it a go. And you'll have a go. And if after half an hour I come around and say, oh, I forgot this, 
here's some instructions. One thing, they're in Chinese. Do you know what? 99% of you will be happy for some sort of instruction. Because even if it's only got pictures on it, it gives you guidance and a little bit of comfort to try and put this wardrobe together. And the ADAPT theory is exactly the same. It's aimed to help you navigate not only through today's world, but also tomorrow's world. So that's it. Short and sweet. The ADAPT theory. Take it, use it, and I wish you all the best of luck navigating through tomorrow's world. Thank you very much. <laughs>